Hello, everybody. Welcome to Kinyobi Khan. Brought to you, we have a special interview today with Cinepress. So I already flubbed up the intro. This is this is so great, okay. isn't it? But welcoming to the stage, we have Tiffany Grant, <laughs> voice of Asuka, among yes. many other anime characters. You guys know her from absolutely everything. Um, you know her from One Piece, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Bonsakun and Full Metal Panic, among others. But of course, mm -hmm. most famously, we have her as the red. Ava Pilot herself, Oscar Langley saw you, right? Yeah. And Shikinami too, obviously in the yes. reboot. So yes, yes. And since you, since you mentioned Bontakun, a fan gave me this recently. It's a little clay figure, and it's Bontakun, oh, and he's there you go. and he's wear, but he's wearing a Unit Two plug suit. So <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> yes, excellent. This one is from our con organizer Josh. Uh, he he's uh -huh. requesting a Fumofu at some point. We don't have to do it now. But mm, we can do it <laughs> great, we got that out of the way. Okay, interview is done. Come on, come on. Have a great come on, one, everybody. Have a great one, everybody. We have time to fill, don't we? Okay. I got the uh, I don't know if you have this one. So if I ever see oh, you in person, yes. it's the ID card. Yes, so. yes, yes. I have I can't really tell you exactly where it is right now, but I have one or probably two of them. Okay. Yes. This is also a sticker, so you can put it anywhere too. I have yeah. an extra Oscar one. Oh, so well, I don't have we one. Ever meet sticker. in person. Yeah. Wow. So cool. we had all these interview questions lined up, but we're going to throw them out the window today uh, for dramatic okay. effect. I yes. also have this uh, uh, Evangelion thing here, um, but this is also um, not important either right now. Yeah. So we'll, well, we'll... it's got that blue haired girl. What's her face on it? So let's, let's not. <laughs> Let's not look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, probably one of the craziest weeks of my career, personally. So my name is Preston. Um, you know, I've been hosting Cinepresto for a while now and just doing interviews okay. and stuff. I'm helping my friend Josh out with Kinyobicon. Um, he needed to have an awesome panel uh, for our virtual day, August 26th. So today, the day cool. that this interview airs is actually my birthday, funny <gasps> enough. Oh, excellent. On top of that, this Monday, um, which on the week of recording would have been, um, what is it, August 15th? I don't know dates anymore. Every the, every day this week is like Monday, <laughs> Friday. Mo it was either Monday or Friday all week, basically, for me. My anime actually got announced, too. So this oh, is perfect. okay. Well, yeah. what is it? Go ahead and it's tell me. It's called uh, Kingdom. Okay. And um, it's a, you know, it's a Chinese, um, you know, history, like, based on, like, the three kingdoms and everything. Oh, But it's wow. a Japanese take on it. So okay. my first anime dub finally got released. And I thought that this would, that's, that's perfect. Because I, I was going to talk to Tiffany. And she's like yes. a long veteran of this, obviously. Yes. I walked into the store, awesome. into mm -hmm. the mall. And lo and behold, my surprise, I found my character figure <gasps> on the shelf. And I had that to buy is, yes, of not course. one, but two. So <laughs> I it, totally, I feel you, Preston. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I want. That's like my personal first question for you. It's like, yes. what on earth did that feel like the first time? Because I was like jumping around in the store and people yeah. were looking oh, at me funky. For and... sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. That first encounter, that's very exciting. Yeah. Um, back in the nineties, when I started out in 1994, um, this is when anime was really coming out on videotape. You know, yeah. this is there was no streaming or anything like that, so it right. actually came out on videotapes. And the first show that I did, it was called Guy Double Target, and I went into this store in the mall called Suncoast, and it was a huge, huge chain back in the day. They sold uh, uh, music and movies, and and it was a big, big place for people to get anime, kind of like in the late '90s and early 2000s. But in 1994 their anime section was like yay big it was this little it was like a half a shelf you know yeah. with about five or six titles on there and one of the titles was the show that i was in Guy uh. Double Target. and so i started telling people in the sun coast hey i'm in this movie you know <laughs> and that was just like super exciting for me to be able to tell yeah. people like look at this movie i'm in this movie it's like a real movie that's in a store that people can buy so yeah i mean i that's totally awesome and yeah the first time i was at an anime con it was 1997 and it was right before um right before volume four of Evangelion came out, which was the one with that Oscar's in. Mm -hmm. And so at that point I was doing a TV series called Blue Seed, which was 
was and still is a pretty popular show. And I found a plushie of Komei Salguchi, my character. And oh my God, I was just unbelievably <laughs> excited that I had been able to buy this toy of my character. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And that obsession has, I mean, it, I was going to say it hasn't abated. It, it has a bit, but uh, <laughs> It, it, there was a period for many, many years, like anything I saw for any character that I played, like I've got to have that, I've got to have that, I've got to have that. <laughs> it's now gotten like really crazy expensive, you know, that some yeah. of these figures are hundreds of dollars. It's I never assume, ending, by the way. It's right, never going to end. That's right. Yeah. And the thing that you bought, your little character figure there, yeah. that was not like hundreds of dollars. This obviously. was a, a very modestly priced $8. I don't know if you could see that right okay, now. Okay. Uh, I so. can't really see it, but okay. That's eight right. Bucks. Yeah. Eight bucks, if they were all eight bucks, I would have all of them. And I really, <laughs> I did used to have this sort of Pokemon attitude about it. Like got to get them all. And yeah. All right. Like, all the Oscar <laughs> I was going to have every Oscar figure there was, you know, and it sounds like the collection would be complete. Well, yeah, you, you just, you can't. And then I kind of gave up when I realized, oh no, you, you can't actually buy all of them. That's, that's not possible. Do, do you have a world record somewhere? Cause I, I feel like it's either you or some some somebody in Japan probably. I don't some, know. Um, somebody in Japan's probably got like. I feel like I've got a lot. Um, I probably have more Oscar stuff than the average fan. <laughs> um, I, a, a good friend of mine, Jeremy Barber, he has got a huge Oscar collection. Oh my huge, goodness. huge Oscar <laughs> collection. Uh, but he usually pretty much sticks to figures. Now I will get plushies and t-shirts i have these earrings which were made mm, out of yeah. phone charms really cute, i man. mean i uh, yeah so there's like no end to <laughs> the kinds of things i have oscar eye drops mm -hmm. i have an oscar chic razor um yeah so i have all kinds of stuff my toaster that i just used a couple hours ago to make myself a sandwich uh it's a hello kitty oscar toaster so <laughs> Yeah, I, I will buy all kinds of weird <laughs> Oscar stuff. So I don't just limit myself to figures. It's all kinds of things. Yeah. Well, you see, you see you know, this is the problem with us doing voiceover is that we make we get the check from doing the voiceover mm -hmm. and then it just goes straight back to the, oh, to the Japanese yes. right shoulders. Like it's oh, hundred percent. A hundred percent. I you're you're absolutely right, Preston. So, I have said this so many times. I have spent far more money buying Asuka merchandise than I've ever made playing Asuka. Oh I, I mean, gosh. by far. By this is far. like a Pullman town. It's like the town where like, you know, everyone's like working for them. You make Pullman bucks, you buy stuff at the store. It's just like within the, the, the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, the company <laughs> store. I mean, I have wondered <laughs> to myself sometimes, I think, was this made specifically so that I, me, Tiffany Grant would personally buy this thing? <laughs> because I used to say years and years ago, I used to talk about, oh, wouldn't that be awesome? Like a Hello Kitty and Asuka crossover because I'm a huge Hello oh, Kitty yeah. fan. Oh, yeah. And, and then in like, I think it was 2010, but I get, yeah, probably around 2010 or something like 2011, they came out with a huge line of Ava crossover. Oh, crossover, yeah. Yeah, Ava yeah. and Hello Kitty. I mean, Hello Kitty is kind of a slut. I, I mean, I don't want to say, but she really is. They will make Hello Kitty crossover with anything. Oh, yeah. But yeah. There's, there is a ton of Hello Kitty Ava merchandise. And I personally own a lot of it. <laughs> a lot. Oh, well, that's good. I have to a know. beach towel. I've got, I've got things that I don't even know what they're for. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't been looking for merchandise of my own character now. Part of, of uh, obviously, you've been a huge inspiration in that front for my horribly compulsive uh, problem. <laughs> I, I think this is this is this is only the start. This is going to be a problem down the line. I'm not, now it that, is going to be a problem. Yes, I'm going to open this while we talk, if you don't mind. I think that'd be <gasps> yes! kind of fun. I think it'd be kind of fun. To, yes, like, do this. please. This is something please very open different. It up. This is like a different interview, right? I mean, how often do other other voice actors interview you? This is, this is uh, probably only once or twice. Not okay. not a lot of times. Not cool. A lot okay, of times. then I, I don't feel too bad about this then. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was interviewed 
many, many years ago by Kyle Abair. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. He's, he's I awesome. I yeah. think that he is awesome. And mm-hmm. I think that actually might have been right before he started working as a voice actor. I can't, we could ask Kyle. I don't know. Mm, okay. I'm but cutting this with he, a Lego, uh, a Lego brick separator right now just to show off. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. I don't know where my uh, actual like pocket. Oh, actually, no, what am I talking about? It's right over there. It's okay. somewhere. It's somewhere. My my desk is. I, I liked I liked opening with the Lego thing better. <laughs> Lego, <laughs> Lego bricks. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a Lego brick All separator. Right. We, when I was we, a kid, you had to just pull them apart with your fingers. I know they they made this thing, <laughs> and it's just it's it just you ply them. Yeah, I know the times have changed. So, mm-hmm. um, but here we go. It's actually pretty nice, actually. My my friend bought yeah. one too. He was there with me. There was I think there was like only three of them left in the shop. So we oh we just yeah, you gotta buy. We just bought them all. <laughs> yeah and then and what store were you at where were you at when you bought it you know what i wish i uh remember the name right now just like a just like regular shop i want to give them a a shout out too that's target or something Uh, oh yeah no it wasn't target um it was like (laughs) it's crazy because you're telling me how small that anime section was back then and now it's Mm -hmm. what it's called tokyo japanese lifestyle it was in uh valley fair so and then now the staff knows that, I, you know, I did the voice and awesome. they're like, why are you getting so excited? It's was like, yeah, because I, I do. The, it came out today. I can finally talk about it. You know? So now there's right. like three anime stores next to each other. It's so crazy, you know, like how, awesome. how big it's grown since you started and whatnot. Oh, like, oh for sure. And now yeah. is this in San Francisco? Where you? This is, yeah, uh, this is in like the San Jose area. So. Oh, San Jose yeah. area. Yeah, okay. Well, Jose yeah, area. there's tons of merch around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. If you go that to Japan awesome. town, then so, it really doesn't end. So. Oh, yes. yeah. Luckily, there's not too as much merchandise as, I mean, obviously, in your case, like, Asuka right. is, like, oh, one of the most merch that, characters out there. Absolutely. So. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't even buy all of the Asuka stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there was that video, I think, somebody put on uh, Red Bart. I think it was, like, yes, can you live Red, off? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was just going to give her a plug. Her videos are awesome. <laughs> it was such yeah, a funny video. You, If anybody hasn't seen it, uh, <laughs> you, there's a YouTuber called I'm gonna Red I'm going to link that. Right, yeah. yeah, Red Bard, and it's Can You Live Exclusively <laughs> Off of Evangelion Merchandise, and the answer is yes. You yeah, I think you're living proof of that. <laughs> you can, you can. And I mean, the the amount of stuff, it's just, it's never ending. I mean, she actually did that video like probably three years ago. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's probably it, gotten even more. Oh, it's, it's only gotten worse. It's, <laughs> it's definitely only gotten worse because, you know, <laughs> The new movie just came out last year, so oh, they yeah. gotta have mm-hmm. new merchandise for that, oh, and a lot of stuff I get that's um, that's like fan made stuff. So a fan made this um, mm-hmm. little Oscar pin, and uh, this was at a convention. That's cute. And, I really love it. Yeah, it yeah. is super super cute. Like a little chibi Oscar with a little pouty face, yeah. and um, yeah, it's just a just a pin. And so I get, I get so many cool gifts, things that are, a lot of them are, are handmade and yeah, just yeah. other things. You were talking about Legos. So at got, a certain point, you can be like, hey, fans, bring me stuff instead. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lego. oh, that's a custom Lego one. Nice. nice yeah. Nice. Custom Legos. There's an Oscar and a unit two. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I get all kinds of amazing. He's got a little stand for him. You gotta get a spear out. Yes. Yes. Like this was supposed to be a formal interview. We just turned this into us playing with our toys, voice actors playing yeah, with their toys. Yeah, voice actors <laughs> playing with their toys. Yeah, that's it. But <laughs> what I got really excited was when yeah. um I got pops. Mm-hmm. That was a uh, like three years ago when I got my yeah, first yeah, pops. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I have pops, and wow. um yeah, so, that that was very cool. But let's go back to what you were mentioning with the final movie because it's crazy yes. to me that like I, I only got into Evangelion uh, last October. And oh, I sat wow, okay. down and I watched mm-hmm. all of it like mm-hmm. in like a week or two. So, yeah. I mean, for me, it was like, wow, this is such an incredible series because this is a creator who's putting out the most vulnerable parts of himself into right. a work of fiction. Right. And for you guys, it must have been something else entirely because you guys have lived with these characters for so long now, right? I oh, can't yeah. even imagine like, you know, just embodying it's- that for so long and- y- yeah for, wow. i mean well yeah. I, I i'm gonna i don't really know you preston but i'm gonna guess that it's been the entirety of your life or at least most of it because i've been playing oscar for over 25 years now yeah so <laughs> it's been a long time and really to me she's just 
part of who I am. You know, Oscar is part of the uh, fabric of my being. So, uh, you know, that's, she's just in me. And I, I realized, I don't want to go too deep into this because it gets dark. But uh, a few years ago when um, Netflix did the TV series and they mm -hmm. replaced the original cast and they yeah. did this mm -hmm. really crappy script, the cast was uh, no, no shade at all thrown mm -hmm. on the cast, but yeah. the script and the direction were awful. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that happened and I just felt like, how can you take Asuka away from me? Because I couldn't like define myself as a, as an entity without Asuka, which sounds crazy, yeah. but it's just, just Asuka has been a part of my life for so long. Right. So then yeah. mm -hmm. coming back around, uh, you know, a couple years later and doing the rebuild movies again, <laughs> that was, that was really good. That was really right. good yeah. to be yeah. able yeah. to close that out and do the final movie, and you do know, it properly, right? yeah. 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 And, and being so, able to do that. So yeah, yeah. it was, so it was very I, fulfilling. I, I've full disclosure. I've seen your original performance. Okay, um, good. And yeah. <laughs> and I haven't seen the rebuilds just yet. We're, we're, I'm going to work on the dub for the rebuilds next. So okay. I'm really okay. excited to see your performance there and how that's yeah. evolved and everything. Um, how much I, I, I have heard that, you know, when you guys were originally doing the show, you guys weren't given the scripts till very last minute or like pretty much day of, right. You know, a lot of right. Time. Well, I, that's pretty typical for any anime that you don't right. ever see the script until mm -hmm. you get there. Yeah. And actually I had, uh, this habit or practice that I did back in the nineties. I haven't done this for boy, a long time, 20 years or more. Uh, but I would be able to get the script and a videotape uh, just like a day or two before. Okay. And so I would watch, we would record two episodes at a time. So I would watch those two episodes and I would have the paper script, holding the, the paper script in front of me and watching the videotape. Uh, and following along like that. So mm -hmm. I was watching it like a day or two before I went in. And oh, okay. I, I used to do that. But um, that was just kind of more because I was interested in what was happening in the story. And also, um, as you know, from having just recently watched it, that my character, Asuka, doesn't get introduced until the eighth episode. Mm -hmm, and yeah. so here I'm being told by the director, Matt Greenfield, that Oscar's this really important character to the show. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm sure she's not that important if she doesn't come in. <laughs> but I said, well, I mean, if she's an important character, then I should probably watch the first seven episodes so I know what the hell is happening in right. this series. Mm -hmm. So I did, I got the first, I got the videotapes and watched the first seven episodes. And then I watched like eight and nine so I could kind of see what was happening with Oscar. So, but... I didn't know what was happening ahead. So I didn't know what was happening after those episodes that we were working on. I didn't have the ability to see anything beyond what we were presently working mm. on. So I didn't know what was gonna happen. Wow, okay. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that, it's absolutely insane. It's just, you kind of mm -hmm. went in blind, but you guys really made the best of it. And that performance from your guys' original dub is still iconic, you know, to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You guys, it, it's it, it's night and day, like just the Thank you. level of dedication that you guys put in. And, you know, personally for me and my friends, like when we were rewatching it, like, yeah, wow. Tiffany's performance is just like <laughs> out of the park there. It's like, well, completely. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we, great work we, there. Luckily, we really were able to spend a lot of time on it mm -hmm. back then. And, um, uh, my understanding, like with the Netflix version, that was cranked out pretty fast. Yeah, like, that's the case you know, with a lot of dubs these days. Like, even yeah, like, yeah, there's just bit, so. not a lot of time, not a lot of time to work on that. And as I said, we only did two episodes at a time mm -hmm. back then. And the reason we only did two episodes is because two episodes would be released on a videotape. So that was the reason oh, that right, we yeah, recorded. Yeah. yeah, when oh, okay. when when we were doing Evangelion DVDs weren't even invented yet <laughs> it didn't yeah. exist wow. so uh it was coming out actually on videotape and laser disc and there would be two episodes 
uh, per per tape or per laser disc. It just it so, just blows my mind. It's such a diff- yeah. like for me. It's like oh hey your show's <laughs> out Monday. Hey here's your show's yeah. out. It's all it's all crutch roll now. Go watch all of it. Binge it. The whole thing. It's what right the- there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, that would have been some magical Buck Rogers in the 25th century yeah. futuristic something like I could have never imagined it. I was working it, on three to five episodes for a two hour session. Like that's how fast it went for me. Mm, but So I didn't have. Yeah, like, and that's right. And that's yeah. typical nowadays. It yeah, absolutely is. So Whereas fast now. we were spending, you know, several hours working on two episodes. Right. Yeah. But really make know, sure you got it right. Yeah. Right. And we just also, I will say that some of it is not just that aspect of like, oh, we're really going to focus on this and fine tune. Yeah, there was that. But also you have to understand the technology right, of yeah. that time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, every few lines we would record and I mean, it was all digital, but when the sound engineer would would back up, would stop and do a backup, mm-hmm. you know, you've got to sit and wait a few minutes for that backup. And right. when we would transfer from one episode to the next episode, that would be like a 10 minute or more break where they would have to do a backup of everything you had just recorded. Oh, wow. And, okay. and offload that episode that you worked on. And then, and then they'd have to upload the next episode that you were working on. So it wasn't like a whole series just is already all sitting right there on the hard drive because right. you didn't have hard drives that had that much room. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so it's all on tape. Yeah, and everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was it was being stored digitally, oh, but again, okay. it still was. you just have to think of what computer the capacity, po- oh, the right. processing okay. power, yeah, 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 the backup power, all of that, the speed of computers, how much storage they had. I mean, all of this was just really different. When I can remember recording, and even up into like two thousand three, four, five when we would get to the end of an episode and they mm-hmm. and the director and the engineer would say okay we're switching episodes let's take a break mm-hmm. because it would take five or ten minutes until you were ready to record so you may as well go get a drink or have a bathroom break or eat a sandwich or something or have a smoke <laughs> break or whatever i mean most of the actors weren't smoking but and yeah <laughs> anyway go take a break because it was going to take so long for you to get to that next episode mm. and now it, when it's switching episodes, I don't even think it's a minute, you know, we, yeah. they, ba- they back up that one episode Just, and now we're doing the next one. And that maybe that's 20, 30 seconds. I don't, it's not very right. much time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not so, like go and have a sandwich. <laughs> so when, when you guys were recording that series, did you guys do it in the way that it was like, the individual actors just come in right. do their parts mm-hmm. or was it it's still yeah. like that? Right. Because uh, more or less yeah. like you, Oh, sorry. My camera died more or less than, um, Oh yeah, sorry. We'll do that thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> More or less, you basically just come yeah. and do your parts. Not right. much interaction with the other voice actors still. No, no. Yeah, because it's it's it's, yeah. it's like after it, it's just dubbing, right? As opposed to right, it's dubbing. Which, if for people who don't know, that's a standard way that all dubs are done. It doesn't matter yeah. if uh, you know it's a French studio dubbing a movie that was originally Polish. It, it doesn't right. matter yeah, right. what the original language is or what the new language is. That's yeah. the standard way yeah. that any project, any movie or TV show is, is dubbed mm-hmm. when you're doing yeah. that because everything is already there. The mouths are already right. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything is there. And we I have mean, to I match know, them no matter what. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. And obviously yeah. I know you know this, but it's something that I have explained many, many times. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yes, that is the way that that is done. So one actor at a time in the studio by themselves with the sound engineer and the director. And that's pretty much how it always is. It's definitely an aspect I never see brought up when like, you know, people like to compare, like say sub versus dub or whatever. It's that we have to work with that limitation, you know, of, Mm -hmm. oh, right. Like it's already there and we have to Mm -hmm. work with what they gave us as opposed to like, yeah, in Japan, it would be prelay. They'd be working with the original directors and everything. Right. Right. Well, and then that's not really prelay exactly either. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's true. Right. Western. I think it's like more like a Western style or prelay animation where a Disney movie or just any cartoon you might see on TV here, family guy, the Simpsons. Yeah. They, all of the actors that well, they're usually together, but they record the dialogue and then the animators are gonna do the animation where it's matching their mouths, where it looks like they're talking. Mm-hmm. But 
for most anime that goes on TV in Japan, that's not even the case. It's kind of being animated and the voices are being recorded somewhat simultaneously. Yeah, they might yeah. be recording to like animatics or storyboards, right. maybe have finished animation. Yeah, so okay, it's yeah. not really matching. They're not doing something to match. Those mouths are not made that they're like matching, you know, I'm Tabaka. It's not, no, it's not right. that. Right. Um, yeah. But okay, anyway, yeah. yes, we do have a lot of limitations that we are really trying to match something that's really not ever been meant to match anything. But right, we're trying. Yeah. We're doing yeah, our yeah. best. More respect for dub voice actors. That's just the, yes. the lesson we're, <laughs> we're, making, we're getting at here. Exactly. Um, speaking of voice actors, um, I am aware that you actually got the opportunity to interact a lot with your, um, you know, Japanese counterpart for Oscar's mm -hmm. voice, um, yes. Minoru san Right. Yes. Um, uh -huh. And, you know, there's that obviously that really great drawing video where you where you just like, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If you guys have not seen that, it's, <laughs> it's really terrible. But you yeah, can just... I don't know. I thought your drawing was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can just Google um, <laughs> Tiffany and Miyamura draw Asuka. But I will link and edit everything. We, in. So we yeah. were we were told in advance that we were going to be asked to do this. And I mean, <laughs> I really have like zero artistic experience or background or training of any kind. And I knew it was going to be very, very bad. It, it, it really is very, very, very bad. No, we don't, yeah. no, no, no and, negative self-talk uh, here. That, it was oh, great. It was great. It, it was... It's, uh, <laughs> but I'm like, well, I'm game, you know, I'll draw something. It's not going to look anything like Oscar or anything. <laughs> like I mean, it's terrifying to be honest with you, but you know, it was fun to do with her and, when you look at the two of us drawing, yeah. uh, Mimura, she's so like very focused and very serious in doing her drawing. And mm -hmm. to be honest, her drawing doesn't necessarily look like much like Asuka, but it looks like an anime character. It, it yeah. <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like an anime character, at least, you know, it looks something. <laughs> Mine looks like, I don't know, it was out of a horror movie, probably The <laughs> Ring or something. It's bad. It's really hey, bad. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it but, was that bad. It was... <laughs> but okay, I, never, I never claimed that I could draw. So that's that's a big caveat. And fair, uh, fair. Later, later on, there was a, a little girl. She was probably like eight years old. And her mom was on the staff at the convention. I said something like, oh, I've got to go. I've got to do a panel here coming up. And she goes, you're not going to have to draw anything, are you? <laughs> oh my God. No. So I said, no. <laughs> no. No. No one wants that. I just do the, I just do the talking part. Just the talking part. Uh, yeah. You, you got to meet and hang out with her over the years. I mean, can oh, you yeah. tell me just, uh, I mean, like some crazy stories that have just, you know, never, I know you guys have mentioned before in interviews that it's like, you know, you, uh -huh. you guys have shared this daughter almost, right? You know, this. Uh, yeah. Well, we definitely have an Asuka bond and we first met in April of 2008 and it was at a convention in Hawaii called mm -hmm. Um, Kawaii Con, and uh, we just hit it off immediately. And I had really wanted to meet her for years and years. She wrote this great essay that was in the back of one of the uh, one of the Tonkaban, one of the even Sadamoto's manga, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, one of the in the back of one of those um, Tonkaban, and I can't remember which volume it is. But anyway, um, she wrote this essay, and I mean. I was just so deeply touched by that when I read it and that's back in the nineties. And so I just always thought, Oh my gosh, it'd be so great. You know, I'm going to meet her and we'll just be best friends. <laughs> and, you know, I'm dreaming up all this crazy stuff in my mind about how great it's going to be when we meet and, um, like, oh, we're going to, and we'll go to Pura land together, which is the, oh. the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, I've been the, there. Yeah. Yeah. Pura the, land. Yeah, the Hello the Kitty Rio, Park. Yeah, yeah the San Diego yeah. theme park. Yeah, and it, it just, Pura Land is like the pure land for people who don't catch that. Oh, yeah. The pure it's, land, pur, pure land. It's, it's amazing, right? It's that boat. Yeah, that so, boat, right? Oh, I so, remember. The jelly so, drinks. It, uh, yes. So here's the thing. I meet her and we just hit it off immediately. And within about five minutes, she's saying, oh, I can see why they picked you to play Oscar. <laughs> so... I don't know if that's really a good sign, but in any case, we just really like immediately were like besties and um, 
by the end of the weekend, she's saying, you should come to Japan and we'll go to Pura <laughs> land together. And I'm going, oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Like I couldn't believe it. It was so incredible. And then <laughs> um, about six months later, I went to Japan for my birthday. We went to Pura land together. It was so incredible. It was amazing. And for people who do not know, the yeah. lo longtime voice of Hello Kitty. Do you know who it is? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, it, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh. It's Megami Hai Shibara. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So Ray Ayanami <laughs> is the voice of Kitty Chan. Okay. <laughs> and so, like, the, the top thing that you have to do at Pearl Land, the highlight That's is. Awesome. That's the bizarre. highlight, oh, I know. <laughs> the highlight is, right, you've got to go and see the parade. You've got to yeah. go to mm -hmm. the parade, right? Yeah. So they do it, I think, twice a day. So we go to the parade, and it's all, like, the costume characters, right? And, you know, there's somebody in the suit who's dancing around and doing, like, the Hello Kitty dance and, and yeah, whatever, yeah. And waving. But the voice that you're hearing over the loudspeaker mm -hmm. is Hayashibara. <laughs> and so we were we were just looking at each other and going, <laughs> we're going like it's Ray, it's Ray, you know. <laughs> and that was just <laughs> awesome. And uh, my my husband, not we're not married anymore, but my husband at the time, Matt Greenfield, yeah. he's like, this is just so weird. I'm at <laughs> he's like, I'm at Hello Kitty Land, and I'm here with two Oscars. And Ray Ayanami is Hello Kitty. Like, this is just Oh, so great. Crazy. Now there are two of them. <laughs> yes, I know. It's just, it's just crazy. And um, oh. also on that same trip when I was there, I went to um, an event that she was hosting yeah. at this pachinko parlor because <laughs> they have tons of Evangelion pachinko games. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's like And so the they were, game. it is. So they were mm -hmm. introducing this new pachinko game. So she was making this personal appearance there and mm. we went to go and see her and watch this and we were the only caucasian people in this pachinko parlor like everybody yeah. there is japanese you mm. know and we're standing there and we're watching the thing and it's really fun and um these lucky people who won some kind of drawing get the opportunity for mimura to call them an idiot um, <laughs> by name, you know, like, what's your name, Kenji, and she's like, I'm Tabaka Kenji, or whatever <laughs> their names are, so, and they're just, like, losing their minds, because it's great, <laughs> and I'm standing there, I'm watching this, and a guy comes over and taps me on the shoulder, and says to me in English, like, oh, hello, do you remember me, we met at such and such convention, and I was like, and then he shows me a picture on his camera mm -hmm. of the two of us together at a convention, oh. and I went, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I was like, yes, I do remember you. And this is the first time I've ever been to Tokyo. And I just know no one in Tokyo except for me and Mara. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, oh, less than one minute left. And I'll wrap it up. Anyway, oh, okay. so we'll come back though. Five, five minutes later, another guy comes up, taps me on the shoulder, and he says, Excuse me, do you remember me? We met at such and such convention and he shows me picture. So I'm in Tokyo where I don't know anyone and I meet two people that I've never <laughs> met before and one of those guys he emailed with me for like a year and he's like I can't believe I was at the pachinko parlor with two Oscars <laughs> he was really excited so yeah I, I have a lot of crazy stories like that involving uh, I'm, I'm we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna come right back to more with Tiffany Grant thank you guys so much I'm gonna in the recording real quick and then we're, we're just gonna be right back this is so great thank you so much oh you're welcome hi everybody we're back for round two with tiffany grant um here at kinyobi con and on my youtube channel cine presto mm -hmm. um we just heard an yes. awesome story about mm -hmm. how uh she was able to hang out in japan with miyamura-san and everything mm -hmm. um i had a bit of a similar ish circumstance this last anime expo because oh. i was able to tell um, one of the, uh, my, uh, Japanese voice actor is this guy named, uh, Yoshimasa-san, right? Okay. And, uh, he voices Reiner on Attack on Titan most famously, but, um, okay. I was able to tell one of his co-stars, oh yeah, I, I do this role and everything. And uh -huh. said, oh, I'll tell, I'll tell him about you, uh, uh -huh. when I go back and everything. So maybe one day that'll happen, but, uh, you know, Excellent. let's get into some of the crazier, um, okay. parts of doing Asuka, because I know mm -hmm. that 
you guys recorded this uh, newest film um, mm-hmm. that's now on Amazon Prime, by the way, for those yes. interested. Yes. Um, you guys recorded this largely remotely, right? Um, yes, we did. Um, which, I mean, I've done that on a few anime, but most of them I've had to be like at the studio, right. whoever was producing it. Mm-hmm. But uh, this, the, uh, the studio who was doing the recording for the new Rebuild movies Mm -hmm. is a company called Dubbing Brothers. Now, Dubbing Brothers uh, originally was uh, based in France, but they have locations all over the world now. Mm -hmm. And they've been around for a little over 30 years, I believe. And they did pretty much all the the localizations for the new Rebuild movies, Mm -hmm. but they had never done an anime before. So they Mm -hmm. mostly do live action. And I think they had done maybe one or two other animated projects, but it was their mm-hmm. very first anime. Yeah, so they did ever. Star Wars, Clone Wars, Superhero Squad, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, well, so um, yeah, here the, yeah. I mean, b- before uh, yeah, before you know, this has been less than two years ago when we started on it. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, so I was recording at a studio um, in Atlanta near where I live. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, many of the cast do live in the Los Angeles area and we're recording in Los Angeles. But Spike Spencer, who plays Shinji, um, he was in Australia. So he was recording uh, from a studio in Australia. And then there were several people who were, or at least a a couple people were recording in Houston. uh, John Swayze, who's Gendo, Mm -hmm. and Allison Keith Ship, who is the unbelievably freaking awesome Misato Katsuragi Mm -hmm, and uh yeah so there yeah people were in different places recording and that's you know just kind of how it had to be but that was how it went down and the thing about we did the fourth movie first so we did the new movie and then after that went back and re-recorded yeah one two three so we did the we did the fourth one the newest one first Mm -hmm. and it was like so hush hush top secret i mean it was crazy i've never worked on a project that had that level of secrecy Mm -hmm. and when i went into the studio to record the video had three layers of watermarks on the screen you could barely even see the movie (laughs) wow you could barely see it um it, it, it was crazy. I mean, we're trying to look at like, you know, you're saying how we have to match the mouth flaps and we're looking at it going, oh. What mouth flaps are there? Do, do, do they have mouths? I mean, we're not really <laughs> sure, you know? Um, hmm. it, yeah, it was ridiculous. And then they had invented this new proprietary software that they were recording with. So every time I did a line, it was uploaded to some weird cloud thing where it's not even on a hard drive. And I mean, all of it was just the director, Joe Freya, he was referring to it as the Pentagon level security for this movie. And and it really was pretty crazy. And boy, I kept that. I kept that secret. I'm really good about not telling people about projects. I'm not, I am not, I am not the leaker. Other people may be leakers, but I am not the leaker. We have the not Tom Holland here on. Right and, and when uh, I, I did tell my friend Jeremy, maybe like a few days, it got released August 13th of last mm-hmm. year. Yeah. And I told Jeremy just like a couple of days before. And he goes, damn, Tiff, you really kept that secret. I can't believe you did that. He was so impressed. And I said, yeah. I just didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to put it on you. I trust him. I knew that he wouldn't tell anybody, but that's just a lot to put on somebody, you know, to yeah. let them know that that was happening. And I didn't want to make him have to bear that secret, you know. So I would, <laughs> right. so I would just like tell my parents or something. You know? <laughs> you know, like, they don't care. They're not. They don't like, care. Yeah, they don't know what the enemies is. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're not gonna put tweet about it or whatever so All right well yeah. great work on it because the, the reason why i've been holding off on watching these rebuilds is because g kids mm-hmm. announced that you guys are getting a theatrical release for that so congratulations right? yes i have heard that that will be pretty awesome um, yeah later this year sometime so 
Yeah, let me see. I watched, I well, you know, we dubbed the first three with Funimation. Right. So I went to see um, 1.0. I saw it in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. uh, the dub, I saw it in a movie theater. The um, 2.0, I saw that in a movie theater in Australia with Yuko Miyamura. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, yeah, 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 yeah. We saw it in a movie theater together. Yeah. And but it was in Japanese. So this was yeah, before yeah. we had actually dubbed it. She mm. thought that when we saw it, it was going to be in English because it was in Australia. And I said, <laughs> no, we didn't, we didn't even dub it yet. You know, oh, I'll tell you another, <laughs> I got another cool story for you. Oh, when, when she and I went to Puro Land, we were in the food court where like every all the food is like Hello Kitty shaped food, right? We were having our lunch and she got a phone call during our lunch that was scheduling her to go in and record for that movie. <laughs> that is true. I was there and she told me like what the call was because we knew that this movie was coming, obviously. Right. Yeah. And so that was kind of cool that I was there when, when she got that <laughs> phone call. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. Yeah. But so then the third, the third movie I never saw in a movie theater. It got a limited release in North America, sub and dub. And the version that was shown in movie theaters is a version that is now ephemeral and no longer exists. And mm. so after we did that version, um, Studio Cara made us redub it. Mm. So I just love the fact that there is a movie that's called You Cannot Redo, and I have dubbed it three times. <laughs> I have dubbed Once. a movie called You Cannot Redo. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Got paid all three times. Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. More Oscar um, merch. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it it did not necessarily improve. I still think the first version that we did was the best one of those, oh, really? but you know. It all returns to really Pure Land. To all, all, all. That, yeah. <laughs> doesn't. Yeah, that's, it's not yeah. up to me. So. Um, I, I think, you know, considering that you voiced the character for so long, I mean, mm -hmm. what were some of the more challenging bits that you've had to voice? I mean, for me, it was a lot of screaming, you know? Yeah, a lot of screaming. Yeah, screaming yeah. is is definitely physically very challenging, obviously, on your yeah. your voice, your vocal cords. and That scream you did in End Of is just like, what? I'm, what? Yeah, that, and, oh, wow. and that was that was at the end. So yeah, I don't know I hit my about soul. Like, my where, where you have been recording if this is this is from my experience it's pretty yeah. typical but usually the directors will let you save all of that screaming to mm -hmm. the end so you're not right. tearing up your voice right, you know yeah. you're doing scenes where you're like talk 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 yeah. ah, screaming your lungs out and then talk, right. talk, 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 you know and then you're you're after the screaming bit if you have more like regular dialogue to do and you're going to sound like Oh well, okay. You know, let's get down here, Shinji. I mean, you're gonna sound terrible. <laughs> so you know, you're gonna all of a sudden sound like you've been. Uh, can you dub? You know, can you dub 2.0 a fourth time so I can hear that version? Yeah, you know, like you've been dubbing, like like you've been chain smoking three packs a day and <laughs> drinking uh, whiskey well, all day long. So this interview is going back good. to pure land and smoking the whole time. That's <laughs> right. Yep, absolutely. Do one only uh, one of those things, kids. <laughs> No, <laughs> don't do that. The only one uh, of those things, Pure Land, just Pure Land. Pure oh, Land. just Pure Land, yes. Just, just go to Pure, Pure Land. Land. Yeah, yeah, spend your money on Pure Land. Save up Pure Land. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. I wish that, well, I would like to go back there again, but I wish that I could have gone there after they had, you know, all of the Hello Kitty and uh, Evangelion. Oh, the collaboration. Yes, yeah, to the see if they would have had any of it there. That would have been oh, yeah. fantastic. They, they always have some exclusive knickknacks. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there's exclusive stuff. And then there's, there's a, like an arts and crafts area where you can make your own merchandise. Oh and see, I, I actually played three Sanrio characters. We did a show in 2004 called Hello Kitty's Animation Theater. And I played Pachaco, I played Monkichi, and I played Peckle. And you talk about buying merchandise. Well, nobody outdoes Sanrio when it comes yeah, to merchandising. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And Oh my God. Once, I mean, I was pretty bad about buying Hello Kitty stuff. I mean, I'm actually, actually wearing a Hello Kitty <laughs> shirt right oh now. God. And uh, after I played three of the Sanrio characters, then it was like, I was unstoppable. So I was just <laughs> bought, 
buying uh, constantly, like, uh, you know, Pachaco merchandise, Peckle right. merchandise. Yeah. And there was a period around that time when we recorded those shows that I became pretty friendly with this woman who was the manager of a Sanrio store in Houston. And when she found out the characters that I played, then she would call me. She would actually call me and go, hey, Tiffany, we got in such as a, we got a Peckle chair. I think you might want that. And I'm going, yes, put that aside for me. So just all of the stuff that she would get in with my characters, oh my I would God. just go in and just buy all of it. Oh and my God. But she didn't hook it up for free though, did she? No, but she did get me some sweet discounts. Okay, some that's good. That, 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 that does discount. count. Discount. Oh, we're yeah. gonna have to. We're, if anyone's watching this interview from Japan side, can we just set Tiffany up with like merchandising over at Sanrio and with you know? Come on. Yeah, just, that'd be awesome. Just someone up. Just... Like they need to have a direct line. Hit up, hit up Miyamura-san. Maybe she'll help. Yeah. You out. <laughs> well, she actually did when they came out with that when they first did the Hello Kitty Evangelion collaboration, mm -hmm. and I found out about these T-shirts, and I wanted one real bad, and so um, my husband Matt Greenfield he he's pretty good at navigating websites in Japanese you know because oh, yeah, he was yeah. like running a company licensing anime and stuff right so he was on this website trying to buy this shirt and he's doing like google translate on the page and everything and he got to the end where he's supposed to purchase it and he said well I'm not really sure but it's something like you either have to have a Japanese address or a Japanese credit card to finalize this transaction and I can't do it so, so I reach I out to Miyamura and she actually bought them and then would not let me pay her back. So I have, I have, the, they had two versions. They had the white shirt and the black yeah. shirt. I have both of them. She just got the black one. Uh, yeah. So we have done conventions together where we're wearing our matching Aww. Hello Kitty shirts. And in that video <laughs> that you mentioned, like um, Tiffany Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The draw, draw yes. Oscar, we're both, mm -hmm. we're wearing our matching Hello Kitty. Oh shirt. my, yeah. oh, so there's a whole story behind, that's great, oh my Yep, God. and she, yes, and she absolutely did um, buy those shirts for me. So that was, oh, that's, so that was really awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how we barely touched on any of the challenges. Oh, but then like, you know, it's so much worth it. Oh, I mean, the I, I'm sorry, so the ch so challenges, it. yes, of recording yeah, yeah. Asuka. Right, so the screaming, obviously, that's a physical yeah, oh, challenge, yeah. but then there's also, I mean, really a lot of layers of like the emotional challenges yeah, yeah, yeah. and how dark it gets. It's so and... worth it because like, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying that like, no, no, I, I didn't mean that we don't have to bring it back to that. It's just like, right, it, yeah. it just, you love it so much. I think totally. Mm. I, I think her, her character arc is just so cathartic to like witness, especially. You know, she, it is. The most awesome moments. Are you kidding me? It's like, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is um, a lot of people watching the show now will not necessarily appreciate this, but there was the original version that was televised mm -hmm. on Japanese TV, right? There was right, the, that yeah. originally televised version, which is what ADV had negotiated for the rights to release. Mm -hmm. Now, when the show finished in Japan, uh, I mean, they had the Gynax had like totally run out of money at that time to make yeah, the yeah. show. Well, then by the time it finished running on TV in Japan, um, it was successful. And they then they eventually had some money. And so they decided what they were going to do is to, when they did their home video release, which was well after, it came out in, in the US on home video before any place else in the world. And when they were doing the home video release in Japan, um, Ano, the director, he wanted to create um, additional footage to add into their home video release. Mm -hmm. and the vast majority of that footage is Asuka and it's her backstory. And it really makes her a much more sympathetic character when you oh, know yeah, yeah. about what happened to her. So right. there was years and years and years of where Ray was significantly more popular than Asuka. Right. I mean, significantly yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, oh, Asuka's just this loud mouth bitch and nobody likes her and whatever. And they just liked Ray. And in 2003 or something like that, the director's cut version came out. That's what it was called. In oh, the US when it yeah. Was I didn't know it was that big a gap right. for the director's version. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a huge, it was a huge gap of wow. like six okay. years. Yeah. Oh, where, wow. <laughs> because the thing is that new 
ADV did not negotiate for the rights to that footage because it didn't exist. Right. Yeah. So oh, they, yeah. What they okay. had the rights to release was just the version that went on Japanese TV. They mm -hmm. had no idea that all this new video was going to be created. They did not know that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Death and Rebirth and End of Evangelion, those movies that came out a couple years later, like in the late 90s, that kind of that new home video footage, it was sort of like all tied up with the death and rebirth stuff. And it took years to disentangle those rights. Mm -hmm, and yeah. finally, then when ADV did get that additional footage and they released the director's cut and then the platinum edition came out in 2004 yeah. and that had all that new footage in there. And so Asuka ever since then, and that's been 18 years ago, but she's a much more sympathetic character. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. totally um, cool. Right. So that it's it's hard to explain if you didn't kind of live through that like time there, period. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you weren't there. And yeah, she does have a much more sympathetic story arc um, yeah. when you know so, all of the things that happened to her. Our, our, our convention host, actually, who actually wrote up a lot of the questions that he wanted me to ask you about, actually, mm -hmm. he hasn't even seen end of yet. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so it's, 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 a, it's a huge, dark. that's like the, that's the end of like your arc kind of like, you know, for the first part of, you know, before yeah. you worked, obviously. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, there was a lot of backlash when the TV series ended in Japan. And right. Yeah. People yeah. were confused and, you know, it didn't tie everything up in a little bow as a, just a simple happy ending. And, people mm -hmm. were confused and they didn't like it and the studio got hate mail yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know they got death threats it was really yeah, crazy. crazy and so you know the show is and I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything the show's over 25 years old but yeah. uh, you know we end the tv series with basically it's kind of a happy ending shinji yeah, has right. uh you know achieved human instrumentality he yeah. is evolved to the next plane of existence and everybody's oh congratulations yep. congratulations mm -hmm. you know yeah. right so he's got that reaction and people are like damn you to hell <laughs> how dare you how could you how dare you how dare you, how dare you? Yeah. right and so he's like oh oh you didn't like that well screw you because i'm just gonna kill everyone then yeah mm -hmm, you know basically. so <laughs> that was like that was like his reaction for, oh, for end of evangelion <laughs> um and of course, then years later, he comes back and does the rebuilds and everything. Yeah, and yeah. like, goodbye in, the, you know, all of it. For real this time, right? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. It's only sure. like a multi-billion sure. dollar franchise that everybody's uh, yeah. just, yeah. There's, there's, there's just, to doubt. <laughs> yeah. There's there's not going to be any more Evangelion. Oh, yeah. And there probably won't be any more Star Wars either. So, I'm sure they're done with that. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, used to work for Lucasfilm sure. too, and I'm like, yeah, I'm never seeing the final Star Wars film. I'll no, be, my, no. my 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 great grandkids will do that for mm, me. Mm -hmm. Um, like you, so you're you're in the camp that even though okay, 3.0 plus 1.0 is the thing. You think mm -hmm. that you know the studio? I mean, obviously he. I think he's mentioned that he's stepping away from it, but like he's allowing some of the other animators that were a part of the same studio to like you know yeah. step in and put their own spin on the series, right? You know, are, yeah. are you or the camp that you'll be back in some shape or form as Asuka, you know, that is <sighs> job security here, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, obviously I would be willing at any time or place to come back and do right. any version of Asuka if it's like looking at her life before she's introduced in yeah. nerve maybe when she's younger the prequel, maybe when, the, pre <laughs> the prequel or you know a lot of people have have posited about the uh the time jump because there was a 14 year time period oh yeah yeah, yeah between yeah, yeah. Yeah. um hey, yeah. the the second and third movies yeah, and, yeah. And, right so what happened between 2.0 and 3.0 right we yeah, don't know absolutely. so you've got that as a very fertile ground for exploring that you could have a whole TV mm -hmm. series yeah, in absolutely. there easily. And I mean, you could have a sequel, obviously, uh, picking up from the actual happy ending of, of yeah. uh, Thrice yeah, Upon just a Time. Normal, normal life, right? You know, and, you, you are you at know, the train station there, right? So, yeah. And, so. you know, I find it interesting that people are sad. They go, oh, Oscar's by herself. Like, well, okay. 
But it, maybe not forever. I mean, for yeah, that no. moment, she's by herself. But that doesn't make me sad that she's by yeah, herself. Right. I'm happy for her because she got to grow up. She got to you move know? on. Yeah, yeah. It's one of yeah. the most complete endings I've seen. That it's just like, uh -huh. you know, like you, you uh, leave it yeah. feeling like, yeah, that yeah. the motions of that song too. Everything. And just, and yeah. I don't know that I really necessarily. I like that it's open ended. Like this was a right. happy ending. Mm -hmm. They can go on with their lives. I am to up, totally yeah. fine with that. But I would be interested in exploring some of those other avenues, like a prequel yeah, okay. of what was happening to Asuka when she was in training in, uh, you know, the European branch of Nerve. Right. Or, oh, yeah. Or yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. in between those why, two why movies. Did she call her like Prince. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, she like almost serves her. Right, yeah. Her, so. Yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting to find out some of that stuff and mm. um, to find out what like who more about mari i would like to know more about oh, yeah, mari yeah, actually yeah. oh yeah yeah. we she's don't know that much of, yeah even now right yeah, yeah, yeah she she's an enigmatic figure yeah. and i was really hoping when uh we got to 3.0 like oh yeah they're gonna explain who Mar who mari is and yeah. where she came from like nope and even you know we got to 4.0 and you get a little more of it right yeah yeah but still, it's it, kind of like, oh, well, she looks like a teenager, but actually she's like 80 or, I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what's going on there? Is it, like, I think the, the idea was like, oh, yeah, it was a, it was along with that theme of like communication. It's like you mm -hmm. still got to reach Like, even if you don't know something about like this person, it's like you still have to reach out and take the risk. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so even like I, I can kind of justify that, like, you know, just yeah. Like, but yeah, I would love to still learn more. Right. Obviously. Yeah. So. I would like to, to learn more about Mari and what her backstory is. Uh -huh. And and I have no problem with Mari and Shinji seeing like they're a happy couple. Good for them. Yeah. Bye bye. Have a great life. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> anyway, I love it. I just want to see more of Farmer Ray. That was my favorite. Farmer Ray. Ever. Farmer, farmer we need a farmer Ray series three yep, six seasons in a go. movie let's go yeah let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm hoping What's my, my character's gonna be around too i finally finished yes. him off camera by the way oh um, nice yeah he's he's uh we're in season three but the manga is like 800 chapters in so i mean hopefully well uh, I mean, okay we'll he's still alive in the book so far so spoilers huh? sorry <laughs> yeah hey um excellent that's great news for you i love that i mean hopefully that's job security there too right um a question for you though aside from just asuka i mean mm -hmm. are, what are some of your other favorite characters that you've ever played and portrayed before oh wow well in general i love playing any kind of critters absolutely love critters that's the best um <laughs> i i've played a lot of dogs uh but any kind of critters i love that and and little boys i love playing little boys they're mm. so much fun to do <laughs> uh so much fun to play the characters um and but as far as like so specific characters wow i feel like there are a lot of them um laura bodevig and in infinite stratos was mm. was pretty fun uh, another saucy german character um <laughs> Uh, you know, so again, going back to the critters, something that was fun for me, it's not like a really huge part, but Koro, the dog in a Kame got killed. Who, <laughs> oh uh, my gosh. Yeah. Who I remember. actually uh, <laughs> eats people. That was fantastic. Yeah. Loved that. Loved it. Um, no, but there are, I mean, some serious roles too that uh, were meatier, like uh, Kim Hotel in Razafon which is a kind of a, a mecca type show that came out um, not too long after Evangelion, uh, or well, I guess it was a few years later, um, uh, 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 Noir, uh, Altena is a character, like a really, a, it's like a really evil mastermind type mm -hmm. character that I don't get to do that very often. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that was very good. Um, but anytime I find out that I'm going to be playing um, a little boy or some kind of critter or <laughs> or a little a a critter who is a little boy, that's you, know, <laughs> you can't that's you can't get right there. You, you cannot get better than that. Thank that's you, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a project that it looks like I'm going to be working on here in the near future that obviously I can't discuss it. But uh, yeah, that 
I'm a little boy, but I also think some kind of animal. And I just auditioned for a couple of other roles in that same project where Ooh. one is a little boy, but he's also a bear. And then another one is, uh, no, the, she's a little girl who's a bear, like a brown bear. And then the other one is a little boy and he's a panda. Mm -hmm. So I'm like a panda who eats lasagna? Of course, it totally makes sense. <laughs> panda and, Garfield, okay. and, Right, and uh, yeah, and somebody said pandas don't eat, eat lasagna. And I said, tell that to Garfield. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I said, if, if a cat can eat lasagna, so can a panda. I mean- <laughs> I appreciate we're on the same wavelength there. Yeah, yeah it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a cartoon, so I'm I mean I'm not going to judge. I'm not yeah, going to no, judge. Come on, right? Please, people, please, yeah. please. We, I think we Absolutely. need more panda eat, uh, yeah. <laughs> panda eating lasagna. Uh, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I know cool. what you meant. We'll get it. We'll get it some way. Yeah. Um. So uh, on that, that's actually a perfect note. Are you uh, working a bit more on like directing side these days, or are you still doing mainly voice acting? Or I mean, how was how was uh, it been these days? I guess for you? um. Yeah, well, I have actually never directed and oh, that's wow, okay. not necessarily something I ever really aspired to. I have a lot of friends who direct, they all um, who've kind of moved movie. into directing, um, just really wasn't ever anything that I was super interested in. I used to do a lot of script adapting. I do not do that anymore. So okay. yeah, just uh, more of the voice acting really. Um, Right now, uh, we're kind of halfway through these um, Girls in Ponzer films, Girls in Ponzer Das Finale. Um, there are going to be six of them, and we've done the first three so far. Uh, I don't know when the next three are coming out from Japan. Uh, I mean, they say Das Finale, but this is a franchise that's been going on for, uh, I don't know, 12 years, or I'm not sure. I can't remember how long it's, but yeah, when they say Das Finale, I go, eh, maybe. <laughs> you know, I originally heard it was going to be four movies and now it's six movies. And so I just go, okay. Okay, why not? I'll do yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll do six or eight just or whatever it is. We record them like three times, you know? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> unless you want to pay me and then oh, we'll yeah, definitely yeah. record them. Oh, yeah, we record okay. them yeah, sure. yeah, all the times, them. all the times. <laughs> I mean, I wish there would be um, some opportunity for me to get to do the video games because mm. I mean, for Evangelion, there have been a ton of video games oh, that yeah, have been made. Like so and, many, right? You know, the Pachinko games, all the like the different arcade games and, and PC games, just tons and tons of games that have been made over the years yeah, that yeah, I've, yeah. you know, I've never had the opportunity to do any of that, any of the games or toys or whatever, that oh, stuff. Yeah, I would yeah. love to do that. That'd I know that's like a licensing nightmare sometimes. So they just like kind of be like, oh, we'll just leave it, you know, right? Yeah. Right. And as popular as Evangelion is, it's still not really a mainstream title. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you'd get Evangelion into, you know, Walmart and Target. So I, mean, I, I, I don't know. It's crazy. I, I do see it everywhere. I, I was like, I met some like uh, kid who's like 16 and she's like, yeah, I, I love Evangelion right now. I'm like episode 19. I was like, oh, well, you haven't, you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> 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 but I mean, yeah. hey, the, kids are, the kids are watching it now, like for real. Like, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it does continue to be popular. I mean, it, it's, kind of an evergreen title that really yeah, that yeah. people still it really was watch, ahead of its time yeah. watch it and enjoy it. it it definitely was but as far as you know yeah occasionally you might see some evangelion item in a mainstream store but it's just it's not a really mainstream title so yeah that's mm -hmm. that's very tricky as far as getting yeah. any of those other items over here but that's true that's true i mean mm -hmm. yeah I, I know i know they've been talking forever about the live action film adaptation i think there's like yeah that was actually getting close at one point but yeah. uh, when uh yeah when studio cara took all the the rights the ownership of evangelion away from gynax yeah all of those contracts were negotiated with gynax uh -huh. so that was all a partnership between um, Gynax and ADV and uh, the Weta Workshop and Gynax doesn't have the rights to that anymore so that would all have to start all over again 
with Kara, and so I don't know. I mean, I know like Emma Watson was considered that was like way back then, though. Right? Oh yeah, years and years and years ago, Hideaki Anno did actually say that he said like that, an interview that, somewhere yeah. that that Emma Watson was his ideal Oscar. Well, you know, she's like thirty two years old now, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's a, maybe she's only 31, but I know she's like definitely they, past they can do 30. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so she, stuff. yeah, she's, yeah, not, not going to be Asuka. So mm. I remember, you know, for years and years there, I would go to a movie and, and see a, a young, you know, sort of preteen girl in a movie. And I would think, oh, she could be Asuka, like the girl oh. who was in Pan's Labyrinth, you know, right, I was right, like, right. oh man, she was amazing. She could be Asuka. Well, she's yeah. probably 30 now also. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean. Uh, one day, maybe. Whenever that happens, I then uh, yeah. I guess you'll be there for the theme park when they open yeah. up. Uh, Absolutely. Even getting on the handle. Yes. In, in US, right? For sure. For sure. <laughs> I totally will. I totally will. And I I've said for many years now, I said, you know what? Whoever's going to play Asuka in a live action movie hasn't been born yet. Yeah, I think that's how far it is in the future. I just, oh, I don't even think that person has been wow. born yet. So well. that's my opinion. Oh, well, well, until then, <laughs> we have you, which is still the best. Thank you so much for your Thanks. time, Tiffany. I really Thank you. you. Thank you, Preston. This it's has been, been uh, Preston a with uh, Keen Yobi Khan and Cinepresto. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll move on to All the right. next program now.